Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. So just because you live in a city doesn't mean you can't go foraging or you have to go miles to go foraging because there's food growing all around us. In this video, I'm going to be looking at plants that grow in the UK in cities, but you're less likely to find them out in the wild. As for pollution, from what I've read, it's okay to forage in cities as long as you're not foraging from like near really busy main roads. If you're in like local parks, or near smaller local roads, then it's absolutely fine. So yeah, I'm looking for city parks and little small patches of wasteland. These are good places to be foraging in an urban environment. These are pheasant berries or Himalayan honeysuckle, Leicestria formosa. They are native to China, but can be found all over UK growing wild in cities. They're mostly escaped garden plants. The berries are edible they're ripe from around August onwards. And you'll see the berries grow in tiers separated by bracts. They're very distinctive looking and can't really be mistaken for anything else. So only eat the berries when they're fully ripe. You see these ones here are a nice deep purple to black colour. These are the ones that you want to eat. They're really, really nice. They, they kind of taste like treacle and another name for them is treacle berry. They're really sweet, really tasty. But trust me when I say, you don't want to eat the lighter coloured ones, the underripe berries. They're absolutely disgusting. I, uh, yeah, I, ate, I ate one so you don't have to. They're really, really bad. The leaves of Himalayan honeysuckle grow in opposing pairs and have a fairly wavy margin. Staghorn sumac can be found growing alongside urban roads in the UK. It's not native here, but um, I do find it quite a lot in Bristol. But outside of cities, it's quite unlikely that you'll find it. So sumac is a nice citrusy spice that's used a lot in Middle Eastern and Mediterranean cooking. And it's these red berries that we're after. You have to be sure not to collect poison sumac, but it's very easy to tell the difference as poison sumac has white berries that hang down and staghorn sumac has red berry clusters that point up. There are several uh, species of sumac but all of the ones that have red berries are edible. Also, I've never found poison sumac in the UK, but apparently it's fairly common in the United States. Sumac has compound leaves that has many smaller leaflets. And the, the leaves are alternate, so they grow up the stem alternating on each side. And also the leaves are serrated. Uh, we're just coming into autumn now. So the leaves are just starting to turn on the more mature plants. And they go Sorry about the uh, traffic noise. <laughs> they start going yellow and then eventually a nice crimson colour. So once you've got a positive ID on staghorn sumac to taste if the berries are ripe, what you do is just lick the end of your finger and rub it in amongst the berry cluster and then taste your finger and you should get a really strong flavour of lemon. It's a really nice flavour, so, yeah, it's very lemony, but without the bitterness. So you want to collect the whole berry cluster when they're a nice deep colour like this. 
So it's the, it's the red fluff around the seeds that we want. And we're going to dry these seed heads, take them home, dry them, and then grind that fluff into sumac powder. The seeds inside can be discarded just because they're too hard to use. You won't be able to grind them down. So yeah, I'll try and do a video in the next few weeks on making sumac powder. Also, I've not tried it yet, but apparently you can make a really nice sumac lemonade from this. I imagine that's a really nice, nice refreshing summery drink. So I might give that a go from some of these. Rose hips are a really good source of vitamin C in the autumn. And although our native rose hips, the dog rose, are very common, you can find them all over the country, what we're looking for as an urban forager are the more ornamental roses. So like your Japanese rose, Rosa rugosa. And yeah, these rose hips are a lot bigger and also a lot sweeter and tastier and a lot easier to process because the dog rose hips are so small and there's so many of the seeds that you need to get rid of inside that it takes so many of them just to make a, a syrup. With any roses, you can use the petals. They're good for making rose water or Turkish delight. And the rose hips can be used for making jams, syrups or fruit leather. You have to be sure when you're using rose hips that you remove all of the seeds and the little hairs in the middle of the hip because they're an irritant, they're really itchy. Uh, they're nice and easy to remove though, just scoop them out and I usually give them a rinse under water just to make sure you remove all of the hairs. So you can see once you've removed all of the seeds, the flesh that's left looks a bit like a cherry tomato and they do kind of taste like them, they're really sweet, really nice. And another thing to bear in mind when you're using roses, all cultivars of roses are edible so it doesn't matter which type you get. So here's a little tip for you that I like to use when I'm foraging in a city. So I go on to Google Maps and from there it might just look like the city is just one big built up area, but there are always little pockets that you can go foraging. So go on to settings and then on to satellite mode and then you can start to see any green areas like any woodlands, any little streams or any sort of um, patches of wasteland. So just zoom in into these little areas and you can uh, find out as long as they're not like private property, just like uh, public land, then it's a really good way to find those areas. And I've found like hundreds of really good foraging spots around Bristol from using this. Fennel's another good plant for an urban forager. In the UK it either grows in cities or by the coast. In spring you're looking for the leaves which are fern like now in the early autumn they're they're all dying back so they're not much good now but they've got an unmistakable aniseed smell in late summer and autumn i like to collect the the flowers and and the pollen and then eventually the seeds and they've got a really nice sweet aniseed flavor the seeds i use dried and then either whole or ground down into a powder for a nice aniseed spice. Or you can use them fresh or dried as a tea. As long as the plant has a strong aniseed smell to all parts of the plant, then you can't really mistake it for anything else. This is a good example of the sort of habitat I'm looking for in an urban environment, just in a residential area, it's just a little bit of wasteland. And there's a good, at least 30 wild edibles in this small area. Hazelnuts are good for the urban forager. If you try foraging for them in woodlands, there's a good chance these squirrels will beat you to them. But if you find hazel trees in residential areas, then uh, the squirrels are a lot less likely to come here. 
The first two weeks of September are the best time to collect hazelnuts. They can still look a little bit immature at this stage, but it's fine to collect them now and just take them home and uh, leave them to mature for a few weeks. And then you can just uh, crack the shells open and roast them and serve them with dark chocolate. That's my favorite way to eat hazelnuts. I've gone into a lot more depth on how to identify hazel in the video, Common Trees of the UK. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. Uh, but the leaves should be alternate, so growing alternately down the stem. And they should be rounded with a point at the end. And the leaves are doubly toothed. Just a little tip, if you find a load of hazelnuts on the floor, I wouldn't bother taking those because they're the squirrels rejects basically, they're ones that they've picked and uh, they're probably hollow or just not developed. So yeah, you'll waste your time if you collect a load of those up.